Hello, Tom from Photoics here with another quick photography tip guide. Today we are talking about ISO. So what is ISO? Well, in digital photography, ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor to light. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive the sensor is to light. The lower the ISO, the less sensitive the sensor is to light. So what does it actually do? Well, ISO is crucial in photography as part of the exposure triangle. I've talked about this before in other videos. Check out the description box for the link. The exposure triangle is aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. To change one, you have to change another one. When you change the ISO, what you're doing is allowing more light into the camera. Well, actually you're not. The camera thinks you are because it increases the sensitivity of the sensor and it gives you a faster shutter speed. Sometimes a photographer decides he wants to use a really narrow aperture to get a really big depth of field. The trouble is he also wants to freeze motion in that shot. Now he's going to struggle to do this because the narrow aperture has made his shutter speed quite slow. So there's a couple of things he could do to increase the shutter speed. He could add more light, which is quite hard to do when you're trying to take a photograph outside unless you've got massive great flashes or soft boxes or more easily, you can raise the ISO. And then this will give you a faster shutter speed. So you can still have your narrow aperture with a large depth of field, but you can also freeze motion. There's also a flip side to this. If a photographer wants to use a wide aperture to get that lovely blurred background look, but he's outside in the bright sunshine, and some cameras have a maximum shutter speed, which is usually like one four thousandths of a second or something like that but in really bright sunlight sometimes even that is too much and that overexposes the photograph so what he could do is he could lower his iso and that might give him a little bit more room to play with to get an exposed photograph most cameras have what we call a base iso usually it's about 100 or 200. you have to check your manual to find out what it is for your camera a lot of cameras also have ISOs below this, usually called low or low one, low two. What these effectively do is reduce the sensitivity further than the base ISO. We only use these in extreme circumstances. I wouldn't recommend using them very often. Always try and stick at your base ISO if you can. This will give you the best quality possible. And that leads us on to our next point. Well, if ISO gives us faster shutter speeds, why don't we just keep the ISO up high all the time for as long as we want a fast shutter speed? ISO increases noise in the image. Noise is like green and little colored dots and it just really doesn't look very nice at all. The higher your ISO is, the worse this gets. So when you're shooting normal photography in a good, well-lit day, try and keep your ISO as low as you can, but don't go below your base ISO. If you're say at a music concert and you want to photograph the band on stage, then the light is gonna be nowhere near good enough to get a decent shutter speed with your base ISO. You're gonna to have to increase your ISO to get more light in and get a good photograph. The payoff with this is you will see some noise in your image. There's nothing you can do about this, it's just how it is and how it's always been and probably always will be. However, cameras nowadays are so much better at higher ISO than they used to be, you can probably shoot well beyond 1600 ISO and get very little grain. A few years ago when I was doing music photography, my camera wouldn't go above 800 ISO without looking absolutely terrible. Now even budget DSLRs can go well beyond that and still look pretty good. So you've got a lot of room to change your ISO up as high as you feel the image still looks good. Software can also slightly reduce the noise in an image but it does tend to look make it look a little bit softer and I wouldn't recommend relying on that it's only for emergencies. Another issue with noise in the image is it does make it look soft as well even without the software. So again try and keep your ISO as low as possible without going below the base ISO of your camera. I'd highly recommend every time you go out on a photo shoot and you end up changing your ISO when you've finished put it back on the base ISO. There's nothing worse than going out the next day or the next week to take some more photographs, getting back to your computer and realizing you accidentally left your ISO on something silly like 2500 or something, and all your images don't look as good as they could. 
if you're outside shooting landscapes, you want your ISO to be as low as you can to get the best quality, make it look as sharp as possible. If the day before you've done a music gig and you've had your ISO up on 1600, your landscape images aren't going to look very good at all. So after every shoot, put your ISO back to its base. In summary, the ISO can be raised to allow you to use faster shutter speeds in low light situations. It can also allow the use of narrow apertures when you want to handhold your camera because it gives you a faster shutter speed. It's a vital part of the exposure triangle and it's the difference between getting the photograph you want and not getting it. If you have any questions on ISO or any other photography related things, please leave your comments in the comments box and I'll do my best to get back to you. I hope this video is helpful and I'll see you all next time.